your next performer is the producer of Redacted Tonight, you guys. He does a ton of behind the scenes stuff that really makes the show happen. It's kind of cool you guys get to see him. He's amazing. He's super funny. Give him a lot of love. Start clapping right now for Yoki Dan off. All right. Thank you guys so much. Oh, man. No one knows who I am. This is going to be fun. <laughs> I, uh, I do all the behind-the-scenes stuff, all of it. If anyone else says they do something behind the, the scenes. <laughs> I said it into a microphone, so it's true. <laughs> uh, I am the producer. I, uh, I <laughs> oh, man, politics. Uh. <laughs> it's weird to hate the news but still love your job. It's... <laughs> People are, are like, why don't you talk about politics more on stage? I was like, ah. <laughs> Trump's, we all know. <laughs> 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 You're alive in 2018. Like, I have clinical depression, or as I like to call it, <laughs> medical grade sadness. <laughs> I got that good shit, you know? <laughs> Here's the problem. Having depression in 2018 isn't fucking special anymore. <laughs> it's now a competition. People are like, I'm so sad Trump is doing all this terrible shit. I'm, I'm worried, you know, second round of Nazism and all that fun stuff. People are like, yeah, so are we. You're not fucking special. And that's why I don't use suicide hotlines. They just don't care anymore. <laughs> You know it's bad when suicide hotlines call you. That's a... <laughs> I, uh, I, I do have uh, clinical depression, and it's more fun than you think, because here's the thing... <laughs> here's the thing with clinical depression. I can't be murdered. Not yet. No, no, no. You can kill me. It's just assisted suicide. <laughs> I'm so happy y'all left. <laughs> I uh, got new meds recently, which is great. I'm very well medicated. It's going well. Uh, right before coming here, I got a new prescription. My doc was like, just so you know, FYI. Super unprofessional to use acronyms, by the way. <laughs> FYI, just so you know, uh, for the first few days, you may experience some gastric distress. <laughs> Diarrhea. <laughs> but then after those few days, you should get over it, which is also unprofessional for a medical professional. <laughs> How many times can I say professional in one sentence? Here's the thing. Doctors shouldn't be allowed to say things like, you'll get over it. Because get over it, in this case, means one of two things. Either in a couple days, meds will kick in, gastric distress will go away, we'll be good to go. Or, in a couple days, meds will kick in, and I'll be too happy to care that I'm shitting my pants. <laughs> I'm wearing long jeans in Florida for you guys. <laughs> Big fan of pot, anyone else? <laughs> I didn't know if you guys were allowed to admit that in public. <laughs> Florida. 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 I don't know what that means. I'm from D.C. <laughs> oh, yeah? Good. I mean, I'm jealous, but good. But here's the, the, the thing with, the thing I love most about pot are the D.C. pot laws. They're my favorite. Like, I, I hope they don't change, because they're funny the way they are. <laughs> here's the deal with pot in D.C. It is totally illegal for you to buy or sell marijuana without a medical license. It is, however, totally cool for you to just have it. <laughs> like, if it just shows up on your doorstep, <laughs> like a baby at a church, like, you can, you can just take it in, raise it as your own. Here's the thing. You can carry up to two ounces, which is a lot. Like I don't, yeah. Like I don't know if you've seen one ounce of weed, but that is too much to leave the house with. 
And in DC, you're allowed to just walk around with like a neck pillow of weed, just like one <laughs> else on each side. Cops are like, you look weird, but you smell interesting. <laughs> you look comfy, I think that's important. Here's the, what that means, folks, is it is illegal. It is not cool for me to go up to my dealer and be like, hey man, I'll give you 20 bucks for some weed. It is, however, totally cool for me to go up to my friend and be like, hey man, I bet you 20 bucks you won't give me some weed. <laughs> I don't have a drug problem, I have a gambling addiction, I lose every time. <laughs> Problem, people. <laughs> One of my favorite things about doing comedy is getting to travel to cool cities and do things like this. This is so awesome. Thank you guys for being here. <laughs> yeah, give yourselves a round of applause real quick. Thank you guys. I recently did a festival in Columbus, Ohio, which was surprisingly fun. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. One of my favorite things about Columbus wasn't actually the shows I was on. It was watching this other show. It was called Whiskey Deep. And it was a trivia show for five comedians. Uh, and they basically pair up with an audience member. They do a trivia game. And whoever wins, that audience member gets drinks, basically. It's a nice little thing. The caveat is it's called Whiskey Deep because those five comedians have to down two bottles of whiskey. Yeah, it's a fucking lot. Super happy to be in the audience for that one. That was <laughs> a lot of fun. Here's the thing. My buddy Andrew was... Uh, on the show, he did not win. Um, he got so drunk that at some point I realized, hey, Andrew hasn't said anything in a while. <laughs> and I look up and his eyes are closed. Solid comedy performance. Just pretend they're not there. <laughs> ear to ear grin. And all of a sudden, just as I'm realizing he hasn't said anything in a while, it's almost like he realized he hasn't said anything in a while. So he was like, I'm blacking out, guys. <laughs> And he was. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing, we had like somewhere else to be after that, so like after the show, he's busy apologizing to the woman who was like connected to him for the show, like did not win her drinks at all. She was fine with it because she's a normal human being. <laughs> we get in the car to leave to go to the next spot. I'm driving, obviously, for the record. Uh, and we, as we're about to pull out of the parking space, he leans his head out the window and just goes, I'm sorry I failed you. <laughs> and then I look out the window and it's not the same woman. <laughs> so he just shouted, I'm sorry I failed you at a strange woman he didn't know. And I think we can all agree that's the only cat call that could ever work. <laughs> I've been Yoki Danoff. Have a great night, guys. Yeah.